All right. I sprayed the undercoating on it. I used the whole can. I kind of got by with less, but I, I put the whole can under there. So it looks gorilla, but it doesn't make any difference. It's waterproof. It's just a wheel well anyway. And the insulation is for when it gets cold or warm, the inside of the uh, cab. Now, if you can see right there on the frame, I sprayed a little bit on the frame. You see how it, it almost wrinkles up? It actually wrinkles up. And it's a rubberized coating. After it's on there for a little while, it wrinkles up. And like I said, I did it all the whole, did the whole bottom here. So, that look good, but to me it does. And it's insulation, that's all it is. Now we can put our wheel back on and uh, torque it down to specs. And we're done. So, remember, change those tires on that motorhome. I got a real, deal, real good deal on these tires, so uh, they're not Michelin's, but uh, I'm guessing about going to cost me about twelve hundred bucks for six tires. Now another thing you got to watch out for while I'm while I'm on the subject, uh, you want at least a ten ply tire, okay? Now somebody will try to sell you. Somebody tries to sell you some a uh, lot cheaper tires. It's not going to be the heavy ply. Uh, these back tires, are, you fill them up at 80 pounds. Your back tires at 80 pounds, your front tires are 75. But they make trailer tires in the same size. Like for a horse trailer. Or, so you got to have at least 10 ply. You don't want trailer tires. Make sure you get the right tires for your motor. Uh, I had some people quote me some a lot cheaper prices on tires. And then I checked into it. There wasn't there wasn't ten ply, and there were trailer tires. So beware! Don't put trailer tires on your motor. On. All right, that's it. Good luck. Okay, one more thing. When I I cut this sheeting, it's pretty thick. It's it's not a it's not just it's not just styrofoam type. It's like a thick pretty hard stuff uh, to adhere it to the to the bottom what I did I took my knife and I I cut out squares I made this I made them square and it was where I there was a big piece missing what I did I cut out the star from that was there and I fit a, a rectangle I should say in there and then to glue it I just put this stuff right here okay it's just silicone it's, I think it's mostly silicone uh, all stuff I got it loads or rather yeah loads and glue it up up there first I let it dry good then I come back with this stuff which is nothing but a mess I try to piece it together with this and then uh, it looked pretty good so we went back and like I said, we put the undercoating on it and it's really looking good. Time, time to put the tires on and bring it to the tire shop and get the other tires. Okay, just want to say we changed all the tires on the van. Uh, we changed, including the spare. So it's seven tires. All brand new rubber all the way around. And you need to do this every five years. We went eight. Eight years. But then we had some blowouts. Like I said before. These are all brand spanking new tires. And uh including spare, like I said. Now we're good to go. 
Tire Man recommended every five years. Of course, you're selling tires. You recommend it every five years, change all your tires. But I'm trying to, the stuff that I put in this video, uh, on the tires. And I normally keep them, uh, keep them covered. I have them off now to make this video. But I have covers. Covers that I put on. All right. All new tires, all new rubber, ready to go. Okay, camera's all back together. We got the covers on the tires. Like I said before, we have the, the little bricks to keep the wind from blowing everything off. And this is where we had the blowout. And this tire right here. And as you can see, this piece is put back on. This piece right here. And I just screwed it back on, glued it back together like I showed you. So we've been keeping the tires covered and we've been putting the product on it to dry rot prevention. That's pretty much it. So you definitely want to change the tires on your camper. When this tire, when the first tire blew out, or the second tire I should say, when the second tire blew out, we thought it sounded like a shotgun went off in the back of my head while I'm going down the road. I wasn't going that fast, I might have been going 45 miles an hour. And it, when it blew, it made, uh, made an awful sound. Like a shotgun going off behind my head. And uh, the second tire was all the fault of the of the road service. So they didn't send the guy that came out uh, didn't have the proper equipment. And I wasn't able, like I said before, I wasn't able to uh, to know how much air or put air in the tire. It, uh, and it caused the other tire to blow up. So we ended up with two blowouts. And I didn't say anything to the people with the, uh, with the roadside service. But I, I'm kind of wondering about the roadside service, if it's worth it. I mean, I'm, I forget what we pay in, but we, uh, I've used them before. And they were pretty good and I have it on all my vehicles but uh, we had locked the keys in the car and they had of course no problem coming in and uh, getting the keys out of the car uh, but this time the guy didn't know what he was doing like I said before he come out in a little cube and he uh, didn't have an air compressor didn't have an air gauge he didn't know how much air was in the tire. If, if I'd have, if, if, of course it's part, partially my fault, but I should have done after he changed that one tire. I was about uh, an hour or two away from home. What I should have done was go to the nearest filling station and air up that spare tire. Cause I didn't know how much air was in it. You know? But uh, the spare tire did not blow. It was the other two tires ended up blowing. So you live and learn. So take care of your tires. That's how we do it here. Tire repair and prevention on our motorhome.